Right, this is more of um, a fireside chat than a rant. Uh, I'll just go over some uh, hints and things that I found out my last trip to Asia. It might help some people. Uh, the first thing is the Malaysian Digital Arrival Card. It's probably the singular worst website I've ever had to deal with in my life. The biggest problem with it is you can't actually apply for it until about two or three days before your trip. Uh, the application process, you have to be careful if you're in a different time zone. Go off your flights and <laughs> not, not the date you have in your own country and the times. So that's the first. I will do um, a slideshow on how to fill it out. It's a dog of a thing. Um, when, when you come to do your date of birth, like I'm over 70, you can't just type in your date. You've got to scroll back, uh, I don't know how many years, um, and it takes time. The other thing is you have to have your accommodation booked and paid for as well, and you have to state that if you're staying with people like I was, uh, you have to put their address, and you have to make sure you've got the correct address, correct state, and the correct postcode, otherwise it will fail. But uh, anyway, I'll do a separate thing on that. Um, the next thing is Asia Air lines. Don't even think about using them. Uh, I sort of, I think I came up in, um, I don't know, Booking.com or Trivago or something like that, and I hooked onto it. Uh, cut a long story short, I didn't get confirmation. They said I'd get confirmation and tickets within three hours, then it went to 12. Then it went for 24 hours. Then after two days, I got nothing. Went through the cancellation process. Then they issued tickets. Then I had to go through the refund process, which was rejected. Um, but there is an out. You have to lay a complaint with the Malaysian Airlines Commission. And it takes about three months. And make sure that you take screenshots of any text because you will be texting a lot. That's the first thing. So keep away from them. They're not worth the trouble. Um, I've heard of people that haven't actually selected their seat, and that's a dog. I tried to do that, and they make it difficult. And what happened is they went to check-in, and they said, uh, you haven't got a seat. He said, what do you mean? I've got a ticket. No, you haven't booked the seat. And again, he had to go through a refund process. I met that guy in Kuala Lumpur and told me about it. It was an interesting story. Anyway, we'll leave them alone. Asian here, forget them. Now, next thing, um, food. Uh, Asian food uh, is hot and spicy, and a lot of, lot, of, lot of meals are. And you get like a pesto with all sorts of grains and stuff in it. Uh, be careful of that. Um, it can have a bad effect on your di digestive system and give, give you the runs for... A couple of days. Um, I, I get it every trip. I'm a sort of a, a wake up to it now. I sort of uh, push all that to the side and keep away from those sort of strong sources. So that's just something to remember. Um, the other thing is, uh, we'll probably jump onto Thailand now. Uh, Thailand is cash is king. If you haven't got cash and you're relying on a credit card, don't go. Um, even uh, supermarkets, unless you spend 500 baht, um, they won't even consider it, and a lot of them will charge a 5% penalty uh, to cover their costs. Um, hotels, airlines, and everything else, they take credit cards, there's no problem. But you'll find it pretty well everywhere else, including restaurants. Um, the bigger restaurants take credit cards, uh, everything else is cash. Uh, when you go to markets, it's cash. So you have to be prepared now to get cash. This is how you do it. Uh, go go to an airport, like when you land, like in Bangkok. Go to a money machine, but be careful which money machine you use. You have to use a bank money machine. There are a lot of independent ones around, and they charge a 220 baht fee for using their ATM. 
So just be careful that you get to that stage, you'll get a notification, just cancel out of it and try another one. Alright? And uh, so that's that part of it. Um, next thing in Thailand and Malaysia, not so bad for me in Malaysia because I've got friends there and I've got vehicles that drive me around, but I don't in Thailand. So um, don't even think about renting a car. Uh, not only will the traffic drive you crazy, um, the road rules, and there are only one road rule, and that is there are no road rules uh, unless you know how to blend in. You won't even navigate. I tried it with Waze and Google Maps to navigate. The problem was they detected I was in Thailand and uh, <laughs> put, put, put all the writing in Thai, which, of course, I couldn't understand, and I never managed to get around that. And the other thing is... Uh, Internet in Thailand is very, very patchy. I've got a Skyroam that I use, and uh, without that, I would have been buggered. Um, uh, my, the hotels I were in, the, the Wi-Fi was good in two of them, but uh, the other one was absolutely abysmal, and without the Skyroam, um, I think I got some screenshots of that. I should probably post that in a short... Uh, anyway, uh, so you need another form, and cell phone reception is not that good either. So uh, that's that. Um, the elephant safari, uh, I got into a, a heated argument with the manager of that. You have to get out of your clothes, which means uh, that all your wallets, passports and everything get chucked in these uh, flimsy little... Uh, wooden lockers and you get, you get this stupid little key I mean anybody with a pocket knife could pick that in about 10 seconds so I told this guy that uh, if anything happened to any of my gear he will be answering to me in a big way and he's not going to like what I do to him and he thought I was bluffing until I looked him straight in the eye and, and told him that I spent too many years killing people so uh, don't even think about trying it with me. Anyway, yeah, the, the uh, elephant sanctuary was good, but it was a bit long-winded. After 10 or 15 minutes, I sort of had enough. Uh, the walk down to the river was, wasn't interesting. Um, okay, it, it was all right, but it was a lot of money. I think it was about $100 New Zealand each. So it wasn't cheap. You got lunch, and lunch was okay. It wasn't grandiose, but it was okay. Um, the next thing, the, the floating markets, I think that was in Chiang Mai, I'm not, I sort of uh, lose between the two of them, um, a bit of a rip-off, um, everything there is probably 30 or 40 percent dearer than any other market, um, however, uh, I would recommend doing the uh, Tiger Sanctuary, where you get close and personal. I, I chose the white tiger because they're rare. These people are really lovely. They, they look after their animals, they're rehabilitating them, they're breeding tigers to put into the wild, and they know their stuff. And you had to go through a short little course, which wasn't only about 30 seconds, they told you not what to do, and you had to sign a disclaimer if you got it eaten, you wouldn't sue them. I think that was the, one of the highlights of my trip. Now, uh, in hotels, uh, you get what you pay for, basically. Uh, in Bangkok, I stayed at the Lotus something or other. It was, uh, um, I don't know how I found it. But any, anyway, it was pretty run down. Um, didn't have breakfast there at all. It was expensive. So, uh, and the internet was zero virtually. I, th I think I was down to... 0.12 megabytes or even less uh, I did an internet test so uh, just remember like a Skyroam there are other I, I do an internet search I bought the Skyroam about five years ago and it worked good however there are other methods that are cheaper Skyroam's not cheap anymore now, I can't remember where I paid you use the daily pass um, I think that was about uh, for 10 passes was about 70 US, I think. But uh, I'd recommend Skyroam. A bit of a dog of a thing to set up. Uh, 
to get it going, if you haven't got an internet connection, uh, you're buggered. You've got to have an internet connection uh, where they have a chat line, and the chat line will look at your Skyroam and get it going for you. So uh, that part of it's good. The customer service is good with Skyroam. Um, Chiang Rai, uh, the White Temple was absolutely awesome. Probably spent two hours there. It's a huge place. Um, you pay for everything. Like I had to pay, I think, five baht to go and have a piss. You got to pay, I think, a hundred baht each to get in. Uh, you can't take photos inside the temple. Um, so that part, the Grand Palace in uh, Bangkok, that was good. Um, can't remember what I looked at there. I think it was the Golden Buddha, five and a half tons of gold. That was impressive. You can take photos in there. It seems to be. No rhyme or reason where you can take photos and where you can't. And uh, the um, giant statue of uh, Guan Yin, the Goddess of Mercy, don't miss out on that. That that was absolutely brilliant. But unless you're super fit, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't even consider climbing those steps. The, the biggest problem with these temple steps is they're not only high, they're very steep and um, they're hard work and, and if you don't like steps don't go to Thailand basically so like I say to Thailand get a driver have some cash and um, have, have good footwear you need good footwear now we went up to the Golden Triangle <coughs> and luckily our driver Danny was on to us a very dangerous place there's a lot of drug dealing there's human trafficking, um, there's all sorts of crap going on up there and uh, Danny told us straight away don't even think about going into Laos, they take your passports off you that's to start with and a lot of people go over there and don't come back um, so uh, it's just something to be mindful of because it's a, a Chinese economic zone over there, a casino which is basically run by gangs and the last government uh, were getting paid off and they laundered laund the money, human traffic needs. they've got whole blocks of flats with people locked up to run scams so um, I keep out of Laos Danny was onto it, our, our driver and even when we got into the boat he joined us, he said I'll come with you because he could speak Thai and if there was any just <laughs> pirates on that river there's all sorts of nasty people around there so you've got to be on high alert. Um, if we got attacked, uh, we'd go into the water. It's as simple as that. Wouldn't get grabbed hold of by anybody. Um, so that's just something to be mindful of. If you go up to the Golden Triangle and you do a boat trip, don't go by yourself. All right? uh, they also run group group tours like with about 50 in a big boat. That's, that's the way to go, but don't go to Laos. Okay, uh, I think that just about covers it. It's probably long enough. <coughs> so I hope this helps people with, with their, their trips to Asia. Um, yeah, I'll do a thing on that Malaysian digital arrival card. It's a dog of a thing. All right, goodbye. Right, there's a couple of things I forgot to mention. It's Air Asia, not Asian Air. Uh, that's the first thing. Now the second thing is when you use a money machine in Thailand, they're back to front to what we're used to everywhere else. You get the card last, all right? Here in New Zealand, the United States, Australia, what happens is uh, they give the card first, then the money, then the receipt. Not, not in Thailand. Uh, it goes uh, money, receipt, then your card. And a lot of people leave their card in the machine so don't do that all right now the next thing is be careful when you tip don't tip too big normally you tip around five baht i made a mistake in a, a hotel um we had a, a, a lovely lovely waitress she did everything open and shut she got rid of the bugs she made sure that the beer was still had plenty of ice and looked after it the, the water was topped up with ice and she really looked after us and the first night I was there uh, I explained to her that I didn't have any small cash 
but I would give her a tip if she worked the following night, and she said she was. That was good. So I gave her a tip of 50 baht, which is about New Zealand $2, I think, something like that. Now, she misunderstood that as a proposal of marriage, and uh, I had to do a lot of swift talking there, uh, because in, in Thailand you can have multiple wives. Um, it's a, a Buddhist thing, the same, the same in uh, Malaysia, if you're Muslim, you can have four wives. So, but I had to explain to her that in the country I come from, you only allowed one wife and I was already married. That was a lie, but it got me off the hook. And I could sense that she was relieved about that. She was probably only 20, I guess. She was a beautiful girl, drop-dead gorgeous. And the thing is, a lot of these, uh, uh, particularly Thai girls, uh, look for older Western men to get the money um, and wait for them to die. The thing is, there's no social security, there's, there's no pensions, there's no nothing. Uh, no government assistance if you're sick, you're dying, you're old or whatever, you just die. Uh, simple as that. So it's, it's the children's responsibility to look after their parents and they take that seriously. Uh, fam family is everything in Thailand and Malaysia. It's everything. So uh, there's also now over the last probably 30 years there's been, um, particularly the girls have been uh, indoctrinated by their mother who's gone through the process of marrying uh, an old western guy or they waited for him to die or milked, emptied the bank account and dumped him. And they've been taught by their, their mother to do the same thing. Uh, and that's, that's a shortcut to them uh, getting a house built. So that's just something to be mindful. It's a different culture. You've just got to work around it. Um, and the other thing with Thai people, like I, I got in a heated argument with that manager of the um, elephant sanctuary, you've got to be careful doing things like that because uh, they, they can take it really, really personal. So... Um, just things to watch out for. I hope this is helpful, and um, and if you go to Asia, enjoy it. Okay, bye.